Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about calorimetry and how we determine um, the amount of heat that's being transferred in a um, in the lab and how to determine energy transfer on paper. Uh, in this case, uh, in the lab, we use calorimetry, and on paper, we use something called Hess's Law. It's kind of interesting. Um, but it, in order to understand those con uh, concepts, we have to first introduce the idea of enthalpy. Okay, now enthalpy, I'll never forget Dr. Stengel, my sophomore year physical chemistry uh, teacher, taught me thermodynamics. And, <laughs> and, so, and he has a PhD in like thermochemistry, thermodynamics, right? That was his thing. And he said enthalpy is a very difficult thing to describe, but it's basically related to how much heat is going to be transferred in a chemical reaction. And so I figured if that's good enough for Dr. Stengel, that's good enough for me. So <laughs> um, without bogging you down, delta H is related to how much heat is transferred in a chemical reaction. And we've already talked about this a little bit, um, but we can continue to go over it. If enthalpy is positive, okay, if we're looking at it from the point of view of the system, if enthalpy is positive, that means that the reaction is what we call endothermic. It means it's absorbing heat. Heat is flowing into the system. It's flowing into the system. So this is gaining heat. Okay. We have we have a we have a negative sign. If we have a negative sign, here's here's the system. If it's negative, that means the system is losing heat, and the heat is flowing out of the system. Okay. The symbol for enthalpy is delta H, and typically what you're going to see is this this symbol right here. And you're going to hear me say that as delta H naught. Okay, this little thing means standard. Okay, delta H naught. Okay, so delta H naught is the standard enthalpy change, and typically the enthalpy change is measured at 25 degrees Celsius. Temperature changes all sorts of weird things about reactions, so they just standardize it to 25 degrees Celsius. And that's close to room temperature, it's just kind of an arbitrary thing, okay? And the units for delta H are in kilojoules per mole of reaction. That's, a, that's an actual thing, okay? And much like specific heat, um, if the states change, if you have ice versus liquid water versus water vapor, the enthalpy changes, so it's not, it's not the same... Um, for the substance, it's same for the substance with a, with um, that's in that particular um, state of matter. Okay, so let's look at some of this stuff. It says here we're given a delta H, and I, it could be a standard enthalpy, but the idea is is that based on this reaction, okay, we want to know how much heat is going to be um, transferred if we only start with five grams of sugar. Now, this looks like a very complex reaction, okay, or a very complex problem. But trust me when I say this is not a horrible problem. Really what it is is a unit conversion problem, okay? Well, how much sugar do we have? We have five grams. In this reaction, we're saying that for every one mole of reaction, we're going to give off this amount of heat. Let's think about just building a fire, going out and having a bonfire or fire pit or whatever you do. Okay. How do you get more heat on the fire? How do you make it release more heat? Will you add more fuel to it? you increase the amount you increase if you're thinking about it chemically you think you increase the mass of the reactants 
because you have more massive reactants, it's going to release more heat. So what we have is a standard enthalpy here that's just based on this reaction. Well, how many moles are in this reaction? How many moles of, of sugar are in this reaction? There's only one mole of sugar. And so one mole of sugar is going to give off this much heat. Okay? Or, given this reaction, 12 moles of oxygen is going to give off this amount of heat. Or by producing 12 moles of carbon dioxide, it's going to give off this amount of heat. So the idea here is that there's that, that this, um, this heat is based on how much mass there is. And that's what we talked about when we talked about heat transfer. It's based on mass and specific heat and all this other stuff. So it stands to reason that if we have 5 grams, we can figure out how much heat there is that's going to be given off by the reaction or that's transferred. So before we do this problem, let me just think about it. Let me just show you one more, like, one more thing. So this is the reaction, and this is just one of the reaction. What if we were to double this? What if we were to say now we have two moles of reaction. Well, the delta H is going to double. Okay? So in the end, all we have to do really is determine how many moles 5 grams is and then multiply the values. If you want the like the shortcut shortcut, all this is really is a unit conversion problem. Okay? So 5 grams. So in order to go 5 grams of sugar, we have to calculate the molar mass. So we go C, how many carbons are there? There's 12. Each one weighs 12. Hydrogen, there's 22 of them, and each of them weighs 1. Oxygen, there's 11 of them, and each one weighs 16. And so this is 144. This is 22. And then I don't know what 11 times 16 is. I guess it's 176, but times 16. So yeah, so 176. So we add the so we add 176 plus 144 plus 22, and we get 342 grams per mole. Well, how many moles is 5 grams? Well, I always like to convert using the x line. So we do 5 grams and we do x line, what unit are we trying to get rid of? Grams. What unit are we converting to? Moles. So it's how many grams? 342 grams for every one mole. And now we do some math. 5 divided by 342. And so now the amount of moles is 0 0.0146 moles. Okay. So now it's just a matter of doing the unit conversion. For every reaction, how many, um, how many sucroses or how many sugars are we have? One. Okay. So let me do this here. And we will call it up and we will do the, we will actually figure this out okay so we're going to start with this and we want to end with heat kilojoules so we're going to do that okay so uh negative five six four five okay so what we have is zero point zero one four six moles of sugar Okay. Now we're going to x. We're going to use x line. So for every one mole of sugar, we have one reaction, one mole of reaction. Okay. So now we get rid of moles of sugar, and we're at moles of reaction. Now all we have to do is more x line here. Okay. So we do more x-lining, and let's see, x-line, so 
for and we know that it's uh, I forgot of course uh, negative five six four five so we're gonna go negative negative five six four five kilojoules for every mole reaction so it's kind of neat that now all we have to do is do the math let me call up my calculator here okay let me call up the calculator and so we now we just do the math point oh four one six oh one four six times negative five six four five and so now the amount of heat given off with just five grams is going to be negative eighty two point four one seven kilojoules and that makes sense because five grams is so much smaller than one mole of the sugar okay and so because it's so much smaller you're not going to give off as much heat in the end all you're going to do is convert the mass to moles and multiply by the kilojoules there it is okay now let's go here now how do we figure out enthalpy well there's two ways we can figure out enthalpy okay the way to figure out enthalpy is using um, either coffee cup calorimetry coffee cup and it's called coffee cup calorimetry because we actually use like styrofoam coffee cups to do it it's really cheap and easy to use and and so we use q equals mc delta t to calculate that okay now this is like some of those problems here where the reaction the heat of the reaction is plus the amount of heat that the solution gains is equal to zero okay so the setup of this is let's see what you're going to do is you're going to do a reaction and when you do the reaction it's in water so there's reaction happening here when the reaction is happening here it's going to release heat or absorb heat from the water and so because and then they're going to eventually reach thermal equilibrium so the amount of heat that the reaction loses is the same as the amount of heat that the water gains or vice versa the water may lose heat and the reaction can gain gain heat but that's how we do coffee cup calorimetry okay bomb calorimetry is exactly what it sounds like we actually take a container and seal it up so that it's not going to change volume okay but we do the same thing in this point now we put this in water and we can measure the heat of the water and then we can measure the heat capacity of the bomb and then we can or, and then we measure the amount of heat that the bomb has trans uh, given off and we get transferred and we can also then figure out how much heat the reaction has now the only thing here is that to calculate the heat transfer of the bomb we use this capital C which is the specific heat capacity of the bomb okay or just heat capacity of the bomb that's kind of what we call it okay and so it's the heat capacity of the bomb times the temperature because then we don't have to worry about the mass of the bomb 